This quick video will teach you how to make a state machine diagram in UML. If you're new to UML or want to know more about UML in general before getting into a state diagram specifically, you can click on the info button in the upper right for a video going over all the basics. We'll be making this state machine diagram in Gliffy, which is an easy to use diagramming app for Confluence and Jira, as well as a standalone tool online. To follow along, you can sign up for a free trial of Gliffy Online and get started in just a few clicks. There's a link for that free trial in the video description or in that same info panel in the upper right. Let's get started. This is an example of a state machine diagram, which is sometimes simplified to just be called a state diagram. And it's a type of UML diagram that shows how the status of an object transitions or changes over time. We're going to be using this example of an elevator to show how the status of that elevator changes based upon the input it receives. Now, let's start from scratch. First, we'll open a new diagram by hitting File, New. And we're going to select UML ERD from this Create a New Diagram panel. What this does is it preloads a bunch of shapes, including all the shapes you'll need for your state machine diagram. Now, to get started, we need to ask ourselves what the states of an elevator are throughout the elevator running in a system. States are represented by this rounded rectangle here, so we'll drag and drop them onto the canvas and type right away to give them a label. So first we'll say idle, and I'm going to put in parentheses doors closed. This is the default state of our elevator. Now I can keep dragging and dropping shapes out like this, or I can click on a shape and hit Command D to make a copy of it quickly. All right, other states of an elevator. We have moving. We have doors opening. We have waiting with its doors open. And we have doors closing. Now these are the states we're going to recognize in this system. And before we start connecting them, we actually need to drop in an initial state icon. This tells you what the default state is in the system as soon as it comes online or goes into action. And I'm dragging and dropping an arrow in as well. You can see a green circle appears when you've correctly linked it to a shape so that you can make adjustments and the arrow will follow along. So we've shown that the elevator is in its default idle state. Our next step is going to be capturing the idea that there's a transition in states that's going to happen. So we can draw in an arrow. And first, we need to ask ourselves what's going to cause that transition. Well, in the case of an elevator, that would be someone pressing a button. So I'm going to label this transition line. And when someone presses a button, the elevator might actually need to shift into different states. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit more space here. And I'm going to add in a new icon which is called a choice icon. This indicates that the elevator has received some input but needs to make a decision about what state to transition into. And so the big factor here is whether or not the elevator is on the correct floor. If the elevator is already on the correct floor, then it can go ahead and open its doors right away. So we'll drag in that transition and say current floor. If the button wasn't pressed on the current floor, the elevator is going to need to start moving. So we'll draw that line down here and say different floor. All right, so here we're describing someone presses the button, and if they press the button and it's the current floor of the elevator, then it'll open its doors right away. If the button is pressed on a different floor than where the elevator is idle, then it'll shift into moving. And what the elevator is going to do is move to the correct floor. Once it reaches that floor, the doors will open. Reaches floor. Great. Now, once the elevator is on the correct floor and it opens the doors, we know that it will wait for a moment with its doors open so that people can get on. And then it will close its doors. The elevator doesn't, by default, keep its doors sitting open the whole time. So we've drawn in those two transition arrows. Now, once the elevator gets to this point where its doors are closing, it needs to figure out where to go next, which indicates that we should draw in another choice pseudo state icon. 
and we'll give it an arrow. And two things could happen. Someone either pushes the button to go to a different floor and the elevator will shift into a moving state. So we'll draw that in and say button pressed. And I'm gonna drag this up a little closer to our choice just so that this diagram stays easy to read. Or perhaps someone forgets to press a button. I'm guilty of that. This would send the elevator back into its idle mode, which is just waiting for another command with its door closed. So we'll label this line no input. And again, I'm gonna drag this over toward our choice icon just so that this stays easy to read. Now, depending on what you're drawing, your diagram could also have exit points, which are these circles with an X through here. This shows that this could be because of an error or a lack of input in the system that allows the object to just check out of the system entirely. You might also have a clear final state, which is shown by this outlined circle here. In our example of the elevator, it's staying in an idle state at all times. But if this were, say, a desktop computer, you might shut it down at the end of the day, which would be a clearer final state to describe. You might also have a system that moves into several states at once. And so you can break those out by adding these horizontal or vertical join bars that show that the system's branching into a few states and then can come back together later. If you're drawing a really complicated diagram, you can also drag and drop in a note icon to provide more details about the system you're describing. So that's all there is to state machine diagrams. Remember that this is just a really basic example of a state diagram. They can get more complicated or even include references to specific pieces of code rather than being a high level overview like this. As you can see, Glyphy has all the shapes you need to follow the correct notation if you are going to draw something more complex.